All right, so now we need to add some actual joints to this model, and then we'll be able to see how these components will interact with each other in real life. All right, let's take a look at our bottom here. And I'll rotate it this way. So what we're dealing with here is this car body with an axle that basically remains stationary. It's just shoved down into that cut that we made for that axle, and it stays put based on the friction from the wood. But these wheels are supposed to move, they're supposed to rotate, and once we add some joints, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But before we do that, we need to ground a part of our model. And what does that mean? By grounding a model, it basically freezes it in its location. It says that this part of the model will never move. It's basically like it's welded into place. So for our purposes, we're going to ground the car body. And to do that, just right click on the component and you can see ground as an option, the second option. Click on that and that will ground the car body and you can see a little pin that's grounding it down. All right, so now let's start taking a look at some of our joints. Under assemble, we have joint and as-built joint. Now we're going to be working with the as-built joints because of how we design this car. There are a few different ways to think about assemblies. In other CAD suites, you design the individual parts kind of on their own, bring them into an assembly file, and then add your mates or your joints at that point. But with Fusion 360, we have kind of a different strategy. We call this master model. And I won't go too deep into this, but the concept is that we have an overall concept that we design from the beginning. We design it how we want it to look without motion, and then once it's to a point where we like the design, then we do exactly what we're doing here and adding joints. So that happens kind of after the fact. For the master model technique, the as-built joint is perfect because it says, okay, this wheel is already built around this axle, so we can use the information here to build a really strong joint. The other more generic joint option, it just, uh, if we look at the tooltip, we can see it positions components relative to one another and defines the relative motion. So you can see based on the picture, we have an assembly where items aren't necessarily touching. They're just kind of out in space. You can add these joints and these components will be pulled together into their spot. But uh, our purpose, the as-built joint, we can just say we want an as-built joint for this axle and this car. And you can see in the component selection, we have two selected, the axle and the car. And then we're given a position, but we're not going to worry about that just yet. Because we need to look at our motion type. Right now it's set to Revolute, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven options here. And each option gives you one more degree of freedom. So we start at rigid, which means you can see it's shaking on screen. That axle and that car body are rigid. They're welded together. Think of them as being welded together, even though we can't weld these materials but they're not moving. I love this little animate option as well. For rigid, it's not too helpful. It just shakes around and says, look, these two are together. They'll be together forever and ever. You can stop that animation and you get the point. I'm gonna accept this and move on to the wheel and then we're gonna take a look at those other types of joints. But as you might expect, we get a feature in the timeline right here that can be edited at any point, edit the joint, and you get all that same exact information back. I'm going to use the markup menu by right clicking and if I go straight up repeat as built joint and now for our components I'm going to select the axle and I'm going to select this wheel here and our default was rigid that's what it was before so it comes in when we reactivate that tool but if I select a different one let's try revolute nothing happens well you can see our position says you need to select a position and for this we need to select something cylindrical that this thing can revolve around. You can select the outer edge or this inner axle edge, but I like to select right in the dead center if it's a circular entity like this. So I'm just gonna select that circle. And you can see the flag go around in a circle showing that it is revolving. And if you're unsure about that, you can always show it again. But I'm gonna zoom out here and let's take a look at some of these other options. So that's Revolute. You can see that it revolves pretty straightforward. But we also have a slider and like I said, we add more degrees of freedom as we go down. So the Revolute added a circular degree of freedom. The slider keeps the revolved degree of freedom, but adds a slider as well. And it looks like that axle's moving. It shouldn't be. I'm going to cancel this and make sure that we have the correct joint here. That looks good. Now if I repeat the as-built joint and select the axle and the wheel. You can see that it's rigid if it's revolute. I'll select that position again. 
click OK. Now, yeah, it looks like our wheel is moving properly. So again, we have a feature in the timeline, and that can be edited at any point. So let's keep going here, repeat the as-built joint, and again, this says some components have been moved, capture the current position or continue in the previous position. Chances are you're just going to continue in the previous position, so I'm going to select that option, and that just means that our model is basically back to its assembled form. All right, so next we want a revolute joint on this wheel and this axle. And for our position, I'll just select the center again. And you can see the flag going around. If we animate that, this material isn't the most apparent as to what's happening, but it is spinning. But let's take a look at some of these other options. We also have a slider option, which you can see it slides in this degree of freedom. We also have a cylindrical which rotates and slides in this direction. We also have a pin slot, which if there was a pin slot, you could see that we could utilize that geometry to move it inside of that slot. We have planner, which if I rotate around, you can see it's just going in all different directions in that one plane. Pretty straightforward. And finally, we have the ball joint, which is full rotation, all degrees of freedom. So again, we want the revolute, and our position is already selected, so we'll click OK. And we want to do the same basic principle to this bottom set of axles and wheels. So repeat the as-built joint. I'm going to make the axle rigid with the car body. OK, accept that. We get another rigid joint here in our timeline. I'm going to right-click, repeat that as-built joint, and we are going to select the wheel and the axle and select revolute and position it right here again and you can see that rotation happening click OK one more time we want these two components with a revolute joint our position is already highlighted so I can just click right here and click OK awesome 